your host, Miss New Love. Today in the studio, we have a very special lady. But before I introduce her and we talk to her and find out what special lady is all about, I would like to thank my sponsors, as I always do, who are Noeki Online, As Am I Beauty, Bell Chic Fashions, and Bless Nab Events. And also, guys, remember that Omega Live TV is powered by Omega House, multimedia company, which is situated in North London, West Green Road, Seven Sisters, next door to Uncle John's Bakery. Guys, you need to share this show right now. We are live on Facebook as I'm speaking. We're also live on YouTube. So you can subscribe for weekly updates on our YouTube page. And also, you know, direct people to YouTube if that's what they're normally used to. So, yes, we are live on Facebook, Omega Live TV. And as I said, we have a special lady in the studio. Her name is Elizabeth Amwa. Yes. Did I pronounce that right? Yes. <laughs> yes, we have Elizabeth Amwa in the studio, and she's a special lady indeed. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you for having me today. And I'm so honored to have you here, as I'm honored to have my guests every week. But... You know, your, your story is quite um, an interesting one. So today we're going to be talking about something that's quite, you know, deep and it's a gynecological issue that you've um, suffered from and, you know, which has led you into starting this awareness and this journey, this super amazing journey that you're on. So, yeah. You're in the studio, Elizabeth, finally. Yeah. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a very, long, been a very time. long time. So yeah, guys, as I said, please share because um, what Elizabeth is about to discuss is a very um, important uh, issue and it's something that, especially in our community, in the Ghanaian community, I think we kind of neglect and her story might seem a bit of a taboo as well. So please share with everyone and listen, tune in to this amazing story. So Elizabeth, where do we start? Where do we start? Where do we start? Okay, so you were raised in Ghana. Mm -hmm and you came to France when yes. you were quite young, yes. I believe. So well, when you came to France, you was probably how old? I was around, I was like 12. Okay. Like 12 yeah. And 12 years old is kind of the age that you start puberty. Well, mm. before, some start yes, around nine. I was quite a late one, though. You was a late starter. Mm. So whilst you was going through puberty, did you ever feel like there was anything wrong with you? You know, did you feel like maybe I'm different? Yeah, I, I mean, was you overly ill? You know, like that how time, was it the transition was, from was, childhood to? If I remember, I was quite young, but even before I had my periods, mm -hmm. as young as I was, say six, seven years old, mm -hmm. I used to have a lot of tummy ache. Okay. So mostly, I was known to be always ill. I mm -hmm. would say, so the puberty, me being sick, wasn't a new thing to the family and myself okay. but then when i had my periods yes they were very heavy and they mm -hmm. were very painful and okay. then there were also other illnesses like i used to have a lot of cold so like okay. fever i was always having fever i was always having thrush which was oh, known wow. as white or kind yeah. Of that, yeah so with that as i said there was a lot going on you mm -hmm. know my childhood mm -hmm. to my adulthood okay so um have you shared mm -hmm. Yes, I have definitely. Okay. Done. Yeah, <laughs> I know you... everyone will share. Please share my story so that it can empower All other best women. Friends, please share this <laughs> because your girl's live on yeah. Omega Live TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you were young, you were going through these things. Yeah. Did you ever like mention to you know your family mm -hmm. that okay, I'm feeling? Yes, my family knew I was I was always sick. I mean, mm -hmm. back in Ghana when I was young, as I said, six years, seven years. Mm -hmm. But then maybe they thought I wasn't the strongest in the family, I would say. Mm -hmm. And when we were in France, yes, often my mom, my mother will take me to the hospital. I would okay. get blood tests done. Mm -hmm. But then they kept saying I have a very low immune system. So okay. they knew that I was anemic anyway. So okay. it was mainly that. And they prescribed me multivitamins. Okay. I was on motivated. So I was supposed to eat the right food. I was I wasn't allowed to eat certain food like okay. cheap goats. Is it cheese, goat cheese? You goat know, stuff cheese. like a lot of chocolates. Uh -huh. I had to avoid them. So okay. some things they were like kind of a special kind of diet. Diet. In case, you know, it, it was just for me to boost my immune system. I would say. So at that time, they thought you had um, a very low immune system. And like I mean, they thought you were yeah. anemic. Yeah. So they hadn't actually. No, no, no. 
I would say no proper gynae scan was mm -hmm. done. Yes, because of the thrush, I was given medication to get rid of them. But obviously, whenever I get treated, it used mm -hmm. to come back. Okay. So at what age did you say to yourself, you know what, I, I need to seek medical help. Like, something's mm -hmm. wrong. I don't feel yeah. right. I don't feel mm -hmm. normal. You know. I think in my twenties, when when I was I was at university, I think around my second year, if I remember, because mm -hmm. my periods were always heavy, as I said. But then I was on the pill before that for okay. a while, so the period were regulated. But when I came off, I came off the pill, I think for a couple of months, and then okay. I remember one time mm -hmm. I had very severe um, bleeding out. I mean, severe abdominal pain and okay. also the bleeding, and that was what alerted me that I have to see the doctors so obviously i i, I saw the doctors and then i was referred mm -hmm. to a gynecologist and i was diagnosed with fibros at that time and at and this time you hadn't had any pregnancies no 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 you were just young yeah. girl at mm -hmm. university mm -hmm. so, so it they, was fibros that i so was they said you had fibros. fibros and then they said it was like a uterine one which is the one inside the womb so conception internal, yeah conception was going to be difficult for me so kind of okay. i would say primary infertility i was diagnosed and then they said because i was still young mm -hmm. i could have still conceived in the future anyway okay so this is in the uk it was in the uk 2008 the UK. at that time around that time yeah okay so did you so at that time you just thought okay i've got internal five fibroids mm -hmm. and that was it you accepted mm -hmm. it and you just was like okay yeah and then so once they diagnosed you what happened how, yeah how was life after that I think at that time, my husband now, he was my boyfriend then. And, you know, we were young both. So we mm -hmm. thought, oh, it's, it's all right. You know, we would just stop taking the pills. We would do, you know, raw. <laughs> sorry to use the word raw. And then we would see because we, yeah. maybe the next 10 years, you know, we, because they we told can't you conceive. That they told you that you can't. It's going to be hard for you to yeah. conceive. So, so in my mind, oh, let's it start, less that. Let's just yeah. But then I stopped eating certain things. I cut down the sugar. I stopped okay. eating sugar then, I would say. But I cut down my red meat intake. So I did a bit of research health-wise, so I started okay. eating healthy, mm -hmm. and it was fine. I finished my degree. I went ahead to do my master's, and during my master's program, I felt pregnant, which was okay. <laughs> you know, what happened there? Because mm -hmm. I thought I couldn't get pregnant, but, you know, thanks to God, I was able to conceive, and I was able to give birth. Okay. So um, I know you had uh, a mis miscarriage, yeah. which we're going to discuss yeah. later, but... Um, was the miss miscarriage before your daughter? No, or? it was. That was way after. With oh. my daughter, I just had a premature. She was born at seven weeks, if I remember. So that was all that just happened. It was obviously it was an early, pregnancy, you know, child mm. birth. I would say, but I didn't, the doctors that, didn't know. Pregnancy? My pregnancy wasn't the usual type. Mm -hmm. I would say I, I I bled throughout my pregnancy. Wow. And and throughout. Yeah, throughout the whole seven months I was pregnant, I used to see have a period. periods. So yeah, they thought maybe it was fibros or because mm. the fibros were growing. Although I had quite lots of scans, I would say at least twenty scans. Yeah, that's what I was. But saying, nothing yeah. was diagnosed. They didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. All that they said it was the fibros that might be playing up. Mm -hmm. And obviously because I'm, I had a very uh, serious or severe anemic mm -hmm. issue, so. They also related that to at that point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I had my daughter, and to me, life continued as normal until in 2015 I got hit, you know, with, with, with all this, this, yeah, all this, this diagnosis, yeah. I would say. So, you was in Germany at the time? Yes, I was in Germany at that time. Yeah. And what was you diagnosed with when you was in yeah, Germany? Yeah, 2015, I was diagnosed with a, a duplex womb, which is having a two womb. Two wombs? Two wombs. Because the reason why. Two wombs. Two wombs, yeah, because obviously. When I gave them my 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 history that mm -hmm. I had my daughter premature okay. and I was bleeding throughout the pregnancy mm -hmm. and then I'm always anemic. So, you know, obviously with Germans, they like to do a lot of research. Yeah, the, Investigation definitely. is quite intense. Mm -hmm. So you have countless of blood tests, scans, swaps. Mm -hmm. And then the last was going to obviously the machine mm -hmm. so they can check your whole body just like the MRI. Yeah. So with that results, that they find out that that was the reason why maybe my child was born premature sure. and that was the reason why i bled throughout the pregnancy because i have two womb so the baby was in one womb and then obviously the other womb was operating normal wow so how did you feel when they told you this did you feel like the nhs in the uk had let you down oh yes i did i did felt they've let me down i i i i wasn't upset you know like 
they would let me down. I was actually mm -hmm. upset with God a bit, you know. I mean, sorry, <laughs> yeah, but it yeah, was, I felt, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I've been through a lot since childhood and I I wasn't expecting to hear that yeah. kind of, you know, resource or that kind of answer. But to some extent, I was also glad that at mm -hmm. least there was, you know, a big answers to the uncertainty, you know, I've been in my head yeah. or all the questions that I've been asking all these years. Mm -hmm. and, but then, obviously, that was just the journey. It yeah. wasn't just the end of it because a lot were, you know, going to come after yeah. I was, which I had no idea. So when they said to you that you had two rooms, like, did they show you, okay? Yeah. You, this yeah. is. Yeah, I remember I was in a room with mm -hmm. two top consultants. And they said, they also said you have two Yeah, vaginal... that was after the, I had the surgery with that. So obviously during okay. that, like, results time, I had mm -hmm. them, I was, obviously it was like a screen, like a TV screen, mm -hmm. and then they showed me the pictures of okay. everything. And obviously, you know, give me the leaflets to go and read about it. And I had to have um, a surgery, which is a keyhole surgery, that okay. we insert a camera to uh -huh. look inside the womb. Mm -hmm. So obviously, that's when I was diagnosed with, with that. a double cervices and a double Cervic. vagina canals. And then wow. also endometriosis stage five. Wow. Mm. That's, that's serious. And I mean, how did you feel? I've asked you how did you feel, mm. but, you know, and how did your husband take the news? I mean, he he's quite a tough cookie, more than <laughs> me, I would say. He he thought that the fact that we've had answers mm -hmm. to, you know, all this mm -hmm. that were happening, as I said, obviously, in and out of hospitals, always sick, you know, having calls or, you know, sometimes feeling fainting, sometimes I fainted, you mm -hmm. know, a few occasions. So, you know, sometimes I have to go on the floor, even when I was breastfeeding my child. Wow. So to him, the fact that I went through so much mm -hmm. and me having those diagnoses, Mm -hmm. it, it made us realize that okay, all the, these were real yeah. it wasn't i wasn't making them up yeah so it was kind of answers to you know everything that we 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 we, we were questioning or mm -hmm. we were pleading or asking the uk doctors mm -hmm. to, to give us answers did he ever think sometimes you were over exaggerating the pain i don't know what's going on in his mind <laughs> <laughs> but i think no because um he he i don't know but then mm -hmm. sometimes when He's the type he doesn't obviously share a lot of emotions and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to me, I feel like, are you, do you actually understand, you know, What's how I feel? Yeah. And, and I think it was more me. The reason being, I used to ask a lot of questions. At one point, I thought I was going crazy because mm -hmm. I've been depressed. I've been on antidepressant before, mm -hmm. you know, for a whole year. So psychologically, I wasn't okay. Yeah. Although people would see me outside and I put that smile on as usual. But, you know, he, to him, he thought, at least that will make me calm down because mm -hmm. I used to ask him some questions that were not a normal question that a lot of people will ask. I understand. So your daughter was born quite mm -hmm. early. I mm -hmm. mean, how was that, the whole experience of having a premature daughter? That was another being young, experience. You know, being a young mother. That was hard. I mean, I had to put, hold my career. I wanted to be a solicitor at that time, obviously. Well, I had my master's. I had a merit in my master's, you know, oh, wow. be, and I was heavily pregnant. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had it just after I submitted my dissertation. Okay. I wanted to go to the UN work. I wanted to be international lawyer. I had so many, you um, know, plans, and um, it was like stabbed in the face, like. But then, you know, she's a miracle. She's mm -hmm. a blessing, especially yes. where I am now, mm -hmm. looking back, because I I still don't un believe that I've been able to conceive. Because, because of all these conditions yeah. that have. Because looking at you, like, I mean, <laughs> like, <what? laughs> it's an internal thing, isn't it? It is, I know. But you... obviously, when you're saying I have two wombs, I have two vaginal canals, I mean, some people must be like, <laughs> yeah. like, how? But it's an internal thing. So, yeah. a bit of a raw question, yeah. but have you ever asked your husband, like, how does it feel? Does it feel normal? Does it feel, like, yeah, I mean, I think, was it higher? Like, yeah, I think to me, having a uterus diaphysis, which mm -hmm. is having a double canals and a double, sorry, vaginal canals, double services and double uh, womb, to me, it's, it's, it's just there, you know, it's, mm. it's, I won't say it's a label, it's part of me. I was born that way. way yeah. It's not a condition that you pick it up. Mm -hmm. It happens when a mother is pregnant with a female mm -hmm. child. So obviously the two tubes that were supposed to join together just don't join together. Yeah. So the child will be born with two womb. Mm -hmm. Sometimes two services, very, very unusual, two mm -hmm. vagina canals, which I fall in the one of the unusual, because mm -hmm. some people have two womb, but they've got one vagina canals. 
So oh, it's not okay. all the time they mm -hmm. have it. So I am that the complete uterus, the Delphus is. Um, that is not an issue, but when it comes to reproductive, you know, um, mm. well, I would conceiving. say con yeah, conceiving, carrying a child to full time, that is where the issue comes. Does because it become a danger? It is a danger because, yeah, it's hard for you to conceive. And even when you conceive, you come to miscarriages or mm. stillbirth or premature delivery. So this is where it's scary to mm. our, I mean, the sad part of it. But having said that, I'm like a normal you know, woman out yes, there. Definitely. And and to me, th those are not a concern, but what is more the concern is the other infections that I have, like the fibros, the endometriosis, the other gynecological the, the other, problems that yeah, you have. Those are serious, because for me being a woman with um, uterus diseases, I'm prone to all these conditions. Okay. So this is where the issue is, that every day at the back of my mind, you know, I, I, I think that I'm going to have a cervical cancer. Oh. And I think I'm going to have the ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. and and it's scary. Like you know, that's it is what it is. This mm -hmm. morning I was with my consultant, and mm -hmm. I was with my husband, and we asked the question: Is there anything we can do with mm -hmm. the endometriosis? And the doctor said, as you know, unfortunately, the only option mm -hmm. is cut you open and try and get them Take out. Off. However, with the is that something they've you know said to you? Like yeah, this is the yeah, way that out. and this is scary because of the um the scarring tissues with the endometriosis mm -hmm. is glue my my womb and my bladder together yeah. so it's 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 impossible for them to cut they might either Have damage my every... womb that's it mm -hmm. or damage my bladder so obviously all oh, this is a typical example of, of, the, of yeah. the other conditions so the double womb itself is not the issue is mm -hmm. the other endometriosis so me telling my story as a special lady mm -hmm. i'm not talking about my double vagina canals my mm -hmm. no that is not the issue mm -hmm. the issue is when a woman have endometriosis mm -hmm. it is scary when a woman have fibers it is scary mm -hmm. when a woman have ovarian it is scary mm -hmm. because there are other complications Shins. that can happen mm -hmm. with them and this is why obviously i i decided to be the voice of the voice this is not because i'm born with a different type of womb <laughs> you know i understand there totally. is nothing we can do about yeah. that but with the endometriosis the fibers the ovariances there are management and treatment and if you've noticed that most of my uh -huh. advocacy work i talk uh -huh. about the management you know the 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 treatment and you know the lifestyle we're gonna go everything. into that so Guys, if you've just joined us, we have Elizabeth Amwa in the studio, who is the founder of Special Lady. And we're, we're going to get to the point where, you know, we talk about this foundation that she started. But we've been discussing, you know, Elizabeth's life, her coming from Ghana to France, and then she came to settle mm -hmm. in the UK. And when she was diagnosed with having this rare condition, which is having two wombs and two vagina canals. Um, yeah, so Elizabeth, gosh, I'm just blown away, actually. Because <laughs> like, I've never actually spoken to you about this. Yeah. Like, you know, so, I, I like, don't, I, you I, always I, ask questions about really my advocacy. Understood. You love yeah, my charity I too love much. Charity <laughs> stuff, but I've never actually asked you like in detail yeah, yeah. how you know we, you got to that stage. And mm -hmm. it's, it's quite emotional. Mm -hmm. But um, you had a miss, miscarriage. Yeah. So, and this was after your daughter. So. Yeah. Um, can you explain to us what that is? Not a miscarriage, mm -hmm. a miss. A mix or silent one. A silent miscarriage, mm -hmm. yeah. So as we all know, a miscarriage is when, a, let's say, a fetus stops growing and then obviously a woman will shred that blood out. Mm -hmm. A miss miscarriage or a silent miscarriage mm -hmm. is whereby you have a miscarriage, however, the blood will not come out. Okay. So mine got stuck. The, I would say the dead fetus got stuck. In and my you actually womb. thought you was pregnant. You Obviously, was... have with the silence miscarriage. Mm -hmm. What will happen is your body will be still producing the hormones, and Everything. your body will be saying yeah. that you are pregnant. Mm -hmm. So my breasts were still growing. You know, my tummy was growing. Mm -hmm. But normally, it will get to a point the body, the pregnancy will as it will continue to shut down. Mm -hmm. So at the shutdown, and then the blood normally will set like come out mm -hmm. of the woman. Mm -hmm. In my case, it got stuck for a whole two months. Wow. Me, I mean. So now the doctors don't know why, but mm -hmm. I personally think it's because of the type of womb, because mm -hmm. obviously, you You've know. You've done your research, yeah, you and know then, what's going on with your body. And then you because know. I had a terminal of, um, uh, I call it, abortion pill. Let me use it, but I, did, I wasn't committing abortion. Oh, but they you know had what, to do that because yeah, obviously you, you had a dead fetus. I had a dead fetus, so I had so to take had to abortion it, yeah. pill to come out, to, to bring out, that yeah. dead fetus out. 
but it still didn't bring everything it still got stuck there because wow. i don't yeah, know cause... maybe because it was there for a very long, long time. time so i had to have evacuation of the womb to evacuate the, oh, the wow. fetus out so at what point did you think something's wrong during that second pregnancy um i remember um when i was four to five weeks i had slight bleeding but okay. because of i have double womb it was mm -hmm. normal mm -hmm. and i was i think that was in germany because mm -hmm. then we moved to the uk okay so when we they told me to to take some pills and you know in session so everything was fine the bleeding stopped mm -hmm. when we came to the uk i mm -hmm. carried my life i carried on with life as normal had mm -hmm. a job at a normal casual admin job mm -hmm. nine to two <laughs> thinking that that is you know that is the best that i can do, do so yeah. i did trying my to get best back to normality. trying to get to normality mm -hmm. and focus more on the pregnancy but i remember one time i sat in the office and i was having a lot of sweaty you know i feel like i'm hot and i'm cold mm -hmm. kind of feverish hot flashes hot yeah. flashes yeah, and i wasn't very well so i rushed to the hospital mm -hmm. and you know that's when I, I told them i'm not feeling well mm -hmm. and i'm pregnant but then mm -hmm. obviously with my history they, they had, had to, to check. Yeah, check. So when they did a scan and then they realized that hang on, you two months pregnant. I said, No, I'm supposed to be four months. Mm -hmm. So with you know a lot of investigation, yeah, they sure. realized that the, the the baby stopped growing when I was okay. two and a half months pregnant. Oh, so okay. it was stuck inside me for a good two months. Oh wow. And you could have this could have caused serious complications. It did because obviously yeah. if it's stuck, it's it's it's, it's a dead yeah. the blood has to come that. out. Yeah. It can kill you. So after this happened, I mean, how did you cope? Because you said you went through depression. Yes, but then the You've truth is, this is, this is yeah. when Special Lady was born. <laughs> so I remember... Yeah, I was just about to ask. Yeah. Like, obviously, yeah. in the midst of all this stuff you're mm -hmm. going through in your life, you know, then you... you. I mean, what? how did the vision come to you? When, when did you say it to yourself? Because obviously, if it was someone else, maybe they'll go into depression, mm -hmm. they'll just give up on life. True. Oh, uh, you know, I've got two uh, rooms. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm different. I'm weird. I'm yeah. strange. Mm -hmm. But you decided that no, you're gonna turn this into mm -hmm. your strength. Mm -hmm. You know. But when did that vision come? Did it come in a hospital? Did it yeah, come? I home? think um, before I had a mis miscarriage, when I was diagnosed with a double womb, I knew one day I would mm -hmm. tell my story. But I wasn't ready. I mm -hmm. thought, okay, you know, let's leave it when everything goes smoothly. Because obviously. Mm -hmm. When I was diagnosed at Utah Visit Office, I was also diagnosed with endometriosis. Mm -hmm. And so to me, there was a lot. And I had a mouth fertility treatment. I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was still in that process. I mm -hmm. knew I was going to come out. But I remember when um, they said I had a mis miscarriage and I can die. Mm -hmm. And and they don't know how long mm -hmm. that that fetus was going to be inside me. So mm -hmm. I have to get checked out mm -hmm. with the um, abortion pill. Mm -hmm. And I think that night when i went home because you have to go and then come back for the you know arrangement to get a yeah. pill i couldn't sleep i was scared because i thought if i close my eyes i won't wake up again mm -hmm. so i think mm -hmm. the process of me lying there and i prayed to god that mm -hmm. god i mean please don't let me die mm -hmm. i want to leave because i think you 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 allow me to go through this because you want me to help other people mm -hmm. i'm i'm blessed to be in a country that you know i have the right medical resources and maybe the, you know some good medical professionals and there are other women in another country or even the uk mm -hmm. that maybe do not know that all these conditions there is mm -hmm. a reason for it or yeah. maybe the symptoms that they have mm -hmm. is a similar to mine so please let me leave it and was also, more like if, a you, if the nhs couldn't diagnose you there must it. be a lot of women out there yeah that, obviously you know, it takes at least something. seven seven years for them to diagnose someone with endometriosis seven years at least mm -hmm. so it's not this is just a typical mm -hmm. example so if i come out and mm -hmm. share my story you know someone having similar symptoms Might can go in, you know yeah. really quicker or can put their feet down mm -hmm. and tell their doctors that you know what i need a scan i need to make sure that i'm mm -hmm. okay you know and so it was it was more nowadays, like a lot of helping GPs, other people nowadays a lot of gps will tell you to go and research do you know that like and come back mm -hmm. to them yeah because uh if i mean i do a lot of research mm -hmm. unbelievable i've turned into a gynecologist myself <laughs> and, um most of the symptoms like mm -hmm. fibros endometriosis you know influences they almost are well, like yeah, they're they similar are, they are especially similar. ovarian cyst and endometriosis you know the symptoms the signs if you're not careful, you might confuse one the so other. So what's the difference between fibroids and endometriosis? Yeah, 
fibrous is uh, non-cancerous growth. So they okay. kind of grow in the womb. It could be outside or outside mm -hmm. on the wall of the womb. And endometrium is like the lining of the womb outside the uterus. So let's say the blood oh, that's supposed to be inside the womb, it kind of grows outside. Mm -hmm. So it's like a scarring tissues okay. and it, it travels. So it can go through your ovaries, your fallopian tubes, yes. your kidneys, your liver, your blood, your heart, your brain. Wow. It can kill you. Endometriosis is scary. Yeah, it is deadly uh -huh. compared to fibroids. Yeah, fibroids are a bit more yeah. subtle. Yeah, yeah. Bit, a little bit more subtle. So you started um, Special Lady mm -hmm. in what year? 2017, February. That was when I had a mis miscarriage. And then when you, so when you started this, did you have clear a clear aim and objective or was it just okay, I'm going to start something, an awareness mm -hmm. to, you know, to create awareness about gynecologi gynecological Ecological. issues mm. that women have? Or did you know, like, okay, this is specifically what I want to do? You know, did you have a clear I had a objective clear, from the beginning? Yeah, or? yeah, I did. But then obviously, like everything, you learn along the process along. as you go. But I had a clear vision because I took my life. Mm. I, I, if you go back to my page when I started, especially, I started with Instagram, Mm -hmm. blog and so i started, started to talk blogging. about yeah i started blogging and i i started talking about infertility example mm -hmm. like being an african woman mm -hmm. you know or coming from an african background mm -hmm. you know topics like these are unspoken it's yes. seen as taboo and it's true because a lot of women go through so much and they mm -hmm. keep it to themselves yeah. because they they're scared of society labeling or they scared of their husband's leaving that's them, it, the husband's leaving them <laughs> or even when someone is married you know it's family members friends mm -hmm. colleagues kept saying oh when are you having a child yeah. or when someone have one child mm -hmm. like i still get it to today when are Although, you having the second yeah one? people know i am having a lot of gynecological <laughs> conditions and people still ask me oh are you not having another one mm -hmm. so i those things don't bother me now because mm -hmm. obviously i am the voice of the voiceless yeah, so i want journey. people not just the patients but other family friends like family, friends, and people around these women to understand that it's not every woman that mm -hmm. having a child is easy for them. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are going through serious, serious. and major yeah. conditions that having a child is the least thing on their mind mm -hmm. because it's like being um, endometriosis patient or ovarian cyst patient. Mm -hmm. I have some days I'm so much in pain, mm -hmm. I can barely walk. There are some days I have, you know, I'm, I'm not in a good mood. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm happy, you're sad you stress, you, you're in pain. So imagine if someone else yeah. say, oh, when are you having a child? It's like, seriously, do you know what I'm going through? Mm -hmm. Some of them, they're heavily bleeding. Mm -hmm. They have to change their sanitary towels seven to eight times a day. And, and they have to eat certain food mm -hmm. to and control. To control. Mm -hmm. And some of them can be very disgusting food. Mm -hmm. Like me, it was so hard for me to start eating fruits and vegetables. <laughs> you know, so it's like you have to switch your yeah. diet. Your career will be affected. Yes. And your lifestyle will be affected. Your relationships will be affected. Mm -hmm. Not just husband and wife, even friends. Because mm -hmm. since I, I got imagine. diagnosed, I have lost a lot of friends. friends Unbelievable. Yeah. I have lost a lot of friends because I've, some have made comments. Mm -hmm. The moment someone is stressing me, one percent, I cut them off. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a good friend, but sometimes it's not me. It's because there are so much things going, going on, on yeah. with you that you you just want you know the most positive lifestyle that ever. Mm -hmm. So this is why that was more the aim. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk for the other women yeah, that cannot talk to. or that are scared to come out. Mm -hmm. So this is what you know motivated me to be the voice of the voiceless. And also so they can also work or relate or I would say work with the doctors, I would mm -hmm. say, so that the doctors can give them adequate or appropriate medical care. Yeah. Because I think I have been neglected so many times. Fine. So yeah. those women can use my story as a motivational tool yeah. to seek, you know, the right medical care for them. And you're doing an amazing job. Guys, if you've just joined us, we're talking to Elizabeth Amar, who is the founder of Special Lady, which is a foundation that she's going to tell us right now. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm doing your job for you. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, so Special Lady has led you to do so much charitable mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. especially in our homeland, Ghana. Mm -hmm. But why Ghana? Because you was diagnosed 
<laughs> he was diagnosed with this thing here. In Europe. And there's a lot of women that in, need yeah. your voice to True. be heard in the mm-hmm. UK. In the UK. In, yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Internationally. But yeah. you went straight to Ghana. And a lot of people might think, oh, she's a Ghanaian. She went to Ghana. I mean, but why? Honestly, why Ghana? The reason why I went to Ghana, obviously. Um, why I did you start in Ghana? That is even the hard part. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. people think it's easy for you to go to Ghana. It's not true. Mm-hmm. I, I love challenges mm-hmm. and I knew starting in Ghana was going to be very challenging, mm-hmm. which yes, it was initially. Mm-hmm. But obviously for me, if I'm able to break into the Ghana, you know, <laughs> community, mm-hmm. it will be easier for me to come on the international level yes, because definitely. here there are the right resources. They are the right equipment. Mm-hmm. People can easily access this information online because mm-hmm. everywhere you go, you know, even when you see your doctors, and then you can't even Google it. You can't call NHS direct. Yes. And then your symptoms, they, you will know what is actually wrong with you. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got dietitians, we've got nutrition. We've got so we've many got uh, opportunities, yeah. or I would say information mm-hmm. out there can guide you. But in Ghana, mm-hmm. how many people can even afford, let's say, MRI scan? Mm-hmm. Or how many people will even think of having an MRI scan? Mm-hmm. How many people will even think of going to have a normal scan or even going to see the doctor because they've got a recurrent thrush? Mm-hmm. If you remember, we used to call them Ode Bois. Some people <laughs> think Ode yes. Bois is normal, but it's, it's not, not normal. It's not, it's not. You see, this is yeah. a typical example. And and even menstrual hygiene, you know, when mm-hmm. people are on their appearance, mm-hmm. the way they take care of themselves, the bathing, mm-hmm. you know, changing the sanitary towels. Mm-hmm. So to me, I think there is a lot of um, education that is mm-hmm. not you know, giving mm-hmm. to a lot of women and girls in, in my home country. And this is where I come from. This is where I'm, I was born. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I'm French national. I live in the UK, UK residents. But as I said, I think in Ghana, the awareness That's, needed you, to be created. To and, and, and I am very happy. And I will say I'm grateful mm-hmm. that I was able to take that challenge, which wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. But glory be to God, I have overcome a lot of the challenges and failures. I mean, now you're like the real special lady, isn't mm-hmm. it? So how was it your first time in, obviously you've been to Ghana a lot of times, but your first time, you know, embarking on this journey in Ghana, how, you know, how was it, the plans? What was your plan? Did you have a plan in place? Y- yeah, the I mean, first... how did you start? Because obviously... Yeah. You I mean, if someone want to learn from it, and, and, and not even yeah. at the, not even that, but yeah. I mean, how how was your journey? How how did you start? Oh, I think my journey. Firstly, I, I was ready myself. Mm-hmm. I was ready to tell my story, but I was also scared because mm-hmm. my initial start was and my articles were posted. Mm-hmm. You know, God, I mean, God bless Yawan Bofankra. He's a sports journalist. He, yeah, he, he was yeah, <laughs> one of the people that from the beginning we spoke a lot about my yes, uh, situation. my situation yeah. and I wanted to pray. So he mm-hmm. gave me that guidance that mm-hmm. why don't you start putting us blogging, mm-hmm. write articles so that okay. they can go in the media. So I started like articles. I wrote mm-hmm. to, uh, I think Ghana Web posted my article, mm-hmm. Three News posted a piece, FM Online posted mm-hmm. my article, Joy News. So obviously my articles were already out circulating. circulating. Yeah. So some people had a bit, you know, of the um, idea where I was trying to go. And my first radio was with 3, um, 3 FM. Okay. That's, yeah, Mami Achwakan. So mm-hmm. she was one of the beginners. <laughs> she was my Ghana manager base. So yes, okay. so it, 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 it was scary. A lot happened. How was the response? You know, how did people respond to your whole story? And it was, did they understand your story? They That's did the... understand that. Even before I went to, oh, I forgot, before I went to 3 FM, mm-hmm. the first woman that, I know she might be watching or she here that <laughs> wanted to 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 sit down and have a chat with me with mm-hmm. Auntie Gifty, which is or you know you're a yes. Gifty Auntie. Yes. She was the first person that wanted to hear your story. <laughs> yes, she, she we had a mm-hmm. nice coffee, we sat down, she gave me guidance, she wanted to interview me mm-hmm. and I panicked. Uh-huh. I remember I broke down, I was mm-hmm. scared because mm-hmm. I wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. Although in my head I was ready. But and when this, you got there this is why I have to tell a lot of people that want to tell their story. Mm-hmm. You have to be ready. Mm-hmm. You have to be prepared. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I flew to Ghana. I thought I was ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then when the when opportunity there. was given to me, I back off. Mm-hmm. I know it was very wrong, but I, I wasn't ready for it. You know, mm-hmm. though I had the dream, mm-hmm. but I didn't have the goal. And obviously, mm-hmm. a dream without a goal mm-hmm. is just a dream. So, you know, that is something I have learned. And obviously, mm-hmm. I have to work on it. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was that. 
scary thing. I mean, you're doing an amazing yeah, job. Yeah, and now we're here today. Now so you're the veteran. <laughs> you learn. <laughs> <laughs> veteran of charity work. But yeah, so going back to mm-hmm. your first time, so you met um, Lady Gifty and, you know, she gave you a platform, an opportunity to tell your story and, you know, you just couldn't do it. But in that season, was you still going to other... Because she's quite I, a celebrity, so maybe that's why you froze or you felt... No, she. that's the thing, auntie. I still want to give you the old name. <laughs> you know, you're a gift. Mm. She, she's lovely. Mm. She, she spoke to me mm. as I, I won't say a mother. So it's, I'm a bit old now, but like a mother, I would say she spoke to me like a mother or a godmother. And so now she, she advised me a lot. She still listening. We do to have me. some pictures of you. Yes, yes, I do. We do we have some pictures of, of you. me in there. Yeah, and then we still speak. You know, she still guide me. She's one of the pillars behind me as well. Omega Life and... TV. Do we have pictures of? <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah so, so her pictures will be showing of the amazing stuff she's been yeah, doing. Yeah, so um, she, as I said, she, she told me that she knows mm-hmm. that I will be here today. She knew it. Wow. Well, she said the fact that I decided to speak up, mm-hmm. I would definitely speak up. I should just realize that God uh, let me go through all this mm-hmm. because there was a purpose for it. So let's talk about some of the places you've been to in Ghana and you know, how you created the awareness Mm -hmm. and, you know, all these amazing things that you've done. I mean, you've been to girls' schools, schools, you've been on TV, you've been radio station, you know, you've even been to the kindergarten. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) how is it like talking to these young, Mm. even boys, you've been letting little boys know about these things? And what kind of questions do they they ask you i think when um each audience is what i speak about Mm -hmm. um as obviously looking at my life you know as you know i was born in ghana Mm -hmm. grew up in france and the uk obviously Mm -hmm. different countries met different people relate Mm -hmm. to different people i've had a lot of different experiences so all the time i don't just focus on special lady i also bring my life as an example to encourage them Mm-hmm. And, and and motivate them mm-hmm. and also teach them like this hygiene, you know, menstrual hygiene because yeah. they will grow up and be men and be married to women mm-hmm. that might be having gynecological conditions. So as young as the age of seven, eight, nine, ten years, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter mm-hmm. if they understand that sometimes your sister or your wife or your mother is in pain, it's because there was something wrong. Encourage to talk to her, be nice with her because mm-hmm. you never know. Don't and leave sur- her. That's it. And surprisingly, exactly. these young boys they listen and the questions they ask. I can imagine. I mean, even the men that I have been talking about, <laughs> you know, I've been talking my about, about, they don't even ask those questions. They're very, very, very clever. We have some people that have sent some amazing messages. We have your godfather, <laughs> yeah. um, Abir, Abir Kuh, Kuh, Santana, Santana and he says, more power to your elbow, special lady, your passion and commitment to raise this awareness is amazing. I pray for God's greater gate grace and wisdom for you mm-hmm. that's such a lovely message we have steve who said nice program thanks priscilla or say wusu go higher dear marie Amar- i'm really bad with these guys <laughs> I'm oh marie you, yeah. she says greetings eva hi marie thank you for tuning in thank you for sharing um we have to go up we have clara corsa who's joined mm-hmm. uh, queer dansoir Pastor Alex, mm-hmm. um, Marie says, Amen. I mean, people are just logging on. <laughs> <They're> logging <laughs> yeah. on. We have Godfrey a champion, <laughs> Letitia, Letitia, Queen Jet, Sewa, Gabra, um, Adapa, Abna, mm-hmm. um, Derek Agre, mm-hmm. Solomon, Kwame. Kwabna, oh. Diana, Spike, yeah. it's a lot. <laughs> my tongue's getting tired here. I can't even. I'm so bad with yeah, my gummy oh, pronunciations. But thank yeah. you, everyone, well, for yeah, joining in. <laughs> oh, your husband is too He says, well done for your yeah. bravery. Oh, that's so amazing. Mm-hmm. You have such an amazing husband. Mm-hmm. And keep doing your thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's been such a, um, a support system, mm-hmm. hasn't he, in mm-hmm. this journey? This is just amazing. So, yeah, Elizabeth, going back to your charitable works in Ghana, so... Um, when was the first year that you started the charity in the charitable works in Ghana? Which it was 2018, 2018. just a year, 
just a year yeah. ago. When and you went this gone, year, I've been to. Yeah, I was 2018 twice, and then this year as well. So when I'm you so you go to these um, schools and these places mm -hmm. to talk, but you also give. I give a lot. And of giving time. is so <laughs> yeah, giving is so important. That's why you're yeah. blessed because there's power in giving. True. And, you know, when I saw the way you were giving out drinks and food and sanitary <laughs> towels. No, seriously, it's, it's amazing. And that's why, mm -hmm. you know, God's just taking you higher and higher. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, charity work is not easy. Mm -hmm. So how do you get the support in terms of getting all these goods to Ghana, mm -hmm. distributing them? I mean, how has it been? Um, obviously, when, when I tell my story, so mm -hmm. I have this Facebook selling pages like okay. my area live so uh -huh. i normally go there and mm -hmm. then i just put a little quote like oh my name is elizabeth i'm the founder of specialty awareness okay. mm -hmm. i go to ghana and create awareness on ghana ecological conditions mm -hmm. if you have any unwanted you know clothing toys mm -hmm. books sanitary, if you also have any sanitary towels so you do highly, the collection i do the collection year. throughout the year and amazingly i only take no more than 10 people items i know mm -hmm. you like how come mm -hmm. i can get over fifteen thousand? Mm -hmm. but one person can donate over hundreds mm -hmm. of items maybe it's god as you said yeah. and and god bless everyone that has donated mm -hmm. when i get to ghana i do have abeku santana that also you know um during my last mm -hmm. um empowerment speech he donated drinks i have yeah sanitary towels that mm -hmm. also sponsor me with sanitary towels okay, and i have good, um yeah. Is it pasta coffee that gave me diapers? I have quite a few, you know, quite even. Um, is it pasta or oh, Daniel Amwatin as well? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do have quite a lot of, a lot people. of people that are supporting, yeah, they, they do support and, special ladies, yes. And sometimes it's quite hard giving. to get financial support, that yeah, is because that's, what, that's what you do need is the it financial is support. The hard, the, I, I, products is easier for mm -hmm. people to, to know, give. give, but it's the actual but physical the actual money, physical, that... but glory be to God, as you could see. Mm -hmm. Even my last outreach, I donated over 20,000 items. And yes. I still don't know how, but, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's God, I will say. And I know next year, you know, by God's grace, I will donate double. Triple. Uh, triple. Hey, you, you are worse than me. <laughs> I prophesy. <laughs> Amen. I receive it's it. Your life. But, yeah, so all this press you've done in Ghana, have you ever received bad press? Because not everyone is going to take this stuff you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, you're doing well. You know, some gunners will be like, oh, okay, what's this? Mm, that you one know, I received how do, all the how time. do you keep strong when you get all the negativity and the, the bad press? And... Yeah, I've had a few <laughs> bad press. I mean, mm -hmm. I think the major one was in April, which I believe you came across. I had a lot of backlash. Mm -hmm. um, I think I went to 3FM the next day. My story was picked by, I don't know, they didn't write a word. I don't know mm -hmm. what, what happened. And the whole media platforms were writing about me mm -hmm. i mean the, i didn't read the comments but mm -hmm. my loved ones and family that read it were saying some people were saying maybe i'm fake and you know mm -hmm. i'm lying i just mm -hmm. want money mm -hmm. i want to be famous yeah and to the extent that my auntie that. was i really upset my auntie was like hey me <laughs> because even this so i went and found them my daughter is not poor yeah yeah obviously you do have family <laughs> members that mm -hmm. you know and it was sad because they don't know me. Mm -hmm. You know, some some were like, "Oh, I know her. I know her mm -hmm. husband." I'm thinking, "You do not know me." Mm -hmm. When I say you don't know me, is as I, I always say, mm -hmm. you can know somebody physically, or you think they are your friend, mm -hmm. but do you sleep with them? Do you mm -hmm. eat with them? It's true. When are you they, in the house? Like this, them? you remember we spoke this mm -hmm. morning because you thought, "Am I coming because of the trains and yes. summertime?" Because you kept <laughs> telling me, "Please, please leave." Yes, you know. Birmingham area early because of summertime yeah. and you know busy trains and remember I told you I'm in the hospital you were like really yeah because I, I never told you I yeah. was in the hospital and this is the thing because mm -hmm. I'm still sat here and I had obviously a whole hour chat with my consultant mm -hmm. you know and so if I go I mean I go through these kind of things and then I come and sit on tv mm -hmm. on radio and I smile mm -hmm. you don't know what happened you know, before mm. that smile. Yeah. You don't even know what happened after the camera comes off. Mm -hmm. You don't know what happened during night time. So to me, if someone say any negative things, mm. in my head, they do not know mm. what they are talking about. Until the day that they will see or meet somebody that is going through, then they will understand. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you want to be a leader, you mm -hmm. want to do great things, yeah. you should know that not everyone will support you. 
And that is none of your business. Mm -hmm. Because your business is have a vision and goals and dreams and work towards those. So now you're a motivational, motivational speaker. <laughs> As well. <laughs> She's now a motivational speaker, which I've noticed that, you know, you do a lot of uh, motivational, motivational quotes mm -hmm. and, you know, empowering people, mm -hmm. not just to do with, not just women, yeah. you know, but just you general. have this gift of empowering yeah. people and it, it's such a such an amazing thing and you know i really think you're blessed thank you so elizabeth what's the plans for special lady so so many plans because as you know obviously because um, it the seems mirror... like you're diversifying hey because i'm mirror fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yes the international is... yeah i know i know the international media are now trying to get me i know <laughs> Yeah, so you had a story in, in the, the mirror, mirror in yeah. the mirror UK, which I yes. mean that's a big deal. Yeah, for the mirror to pick up your the story. reason. I know I'm not diverting. I'm gone in. How, was... how do they? Con <laughs> no, when I say diversifying, I, I didn't mean like that. I meant in terms of like obviously you started off as a charity, you yeah. do charitable works, but God is opening other avenues. True. So it's it's turned you into a leader, like you said. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of motivational speaking, mm -hmm. you know, God knows, it will take you places. It's, yeah. it's opening Amen. many doors. And obviously Amen. the UK press mm -hmm. have picked up your story. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to ask is how they found you, how did, you know, how it, did that it, come about? It all started with them, funny enough, you know, those negative comments mm -hmm. and those backlash in negative media mm -hmm. actually led to an international magazine, the health, the health magazine based in America. Okay. They contacted me on Instagram wow. because they saw those media people. From in, Ghana, all yeah, the way from where, Ghana. And now they called me from America and I was in Ghana at that time yeah. in the April. And then they said, oh, we've seen a lot of media, mm -hmm. you know, backlash, what's going on. Mm -hmm. We want to hear the story from your own map. We want to see your medical thing, what is going on. Mm -hmm. So obviously it started from there and then um, I get, that's when I realized, oh, actually, the international media is interested as well. Because yeah, I well. never thought that I can really, you know, tell my mm -hmm. story to the mirror. So with that, I thought, okay, why don't I just also go ahead with them? And obviously... So was your plans always to just do this in Ghana at first? I, I, I want to do in Ghana, in Africa, because obviously, as I said, coming from an African background, mm -hmm. you know, these topics that I'm spoken. About, so yes, yeah. they, um, they were my initial audience target mm -hmm. but having said that there are africans here mm -hmm. and i'm not saying my africans are not listening to me or they're not getting it but i just feel that a lot of them maybe are not understanding what mm -hmm. special lady stands for mm -hmm. this is why i kept saying that special lady is not there to say yes i'm sick i've got this i've got that mm -hmm. no that is not what it is just to let people know that irrespective of your medical condition which could you be anything, are anything you are special mm -hmm. and you shouldn't allow those conditions to to stop you or distract you from your life goals mm -hmm. and your dreams so this is you know mm -hmm. so if any media platform mm -hmm. all in the world want to share my story to mm -hmm. empower other women of course i will because it's not just being an african it's also being able to use my story as a motivational tool to encourage everyone in the world globally you understand so nana kwame says great show we have a lot of people that have joined. Jenny Brown says, every time I listen to your story, I cry. <laughs> yes, Jenny. Jenny's tuned in. We have Eno mm -hmm. and Mafia Obusu. And so I'm sure these are your people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure people are, are sharing people. as well. That's yeah, good. people are sharing. Mm -hmm. This is amazing because, mm -hmm. you know, we need people to share this mm -hmm. awareness. Mm -hmm. There's more... Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so. Oh, I there's... think go back. Is that Matt? Um, there's someone go else. Up, up, no, I think up, please. Oh, Sylvia's joined as well. Up, down, no, up. I mean, the other way around. Yeah. Okay. Martin. Yeah. You Even know Martin. No, I think so. No. Yeah. So yeah, okay. many different names. Yeah, we, have, we have a lot of people <laughs> that have joined. Yeah. That have, yeah. Know, Ennis, last okay. born. Um, oh, thank you, everyone. So a lot of your, you know, your people have tuned mm -hmm. in, which is great. Okay. Yeah, so Elizabeth, how do you overcome negativity? Because, you know, like I said before, I mean, you spoke you spoke about it before, mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. the negativity, but how do you overcome negativity, setbacks, mm -hmm. failures? Because you've, um, mm -hmm. you've had loads, mm -hmm. you know, but how do you overcome them? And I, I focus, obviously, as you said, motivational speech. I am a fan of it. I, it's my ritual. Every day I listen to motivational speech at least half an hour. Mm -hmm. 
the reason why I listen to them, you know, as a patient suffering from these kind of critical mm -hmm. conditions, it can affect me psychologically. Yes. So if I, I don't tune my focus on mm -hmm. positive things, mm -hmm. already I will be depressed. Yeah. And the more I'm depressed, you know, I will give room to negative mm -hmm. negativity. Mm -hmm. And I just think that to be great mm -hmm. on this earth, you have to stay positive. You have to relate to people that mm -hmm. will not let you feel that, you know, you're different in the wrong mm -hmm. way or they will not help you grow. Mm -hmm. So to me, everything that I've been through or everything that I think in life we go through, there is a good reason for it. Mm -hmm. So why would I allow these challenges to, to, to define me? Mm -hmm. This is, it shouldn't define me from who I am because God didn't create me for me to suffer forever. Yes, you may suffer, but they temporal and also mm -hmm. tomorrow is inevitable anyway. You don't know, it's unpredictable. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. So if you do not stay positive today, mm -hmm. how can you overcome tomorrow challenges? So this is what I always put in my head. Tomorrow is sample. It's not promised to me. Mm -hmm. So whilst I'm alive, what can I do? Wow. What what do I want to leave behind if let's say I'm called to heaven or tomorrow, tomorrow. or next yeah. week? Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. So have you ever regretted exposing yourself this way because sometimes you might be at home and think wow like i've told people about myself so deep mm -hmm. you know it, it's, it's such a private thing True. to let people know mm -hmm. that you're going through all these mm -hmm. issues you know sometimes you might feel vulnerable oh yes you do scared, yeah but i think know. when i had the media backlash yeah i i felt that that when that comment came that she's lying Mm -hmm. she wants money she wants to be famous obviously i know i don't need you know people money but i just felt that what's the point mm -hmm. and i remember i was just one step away mm -hmm. to cancel my outreach in Lima, mm -hmm. although i had a full van full of things to give out mm -hmm. and lucky as always i had a voice saying you are the voice of the voiceless why are you allowing negativity think, yeah to stop you from chasing your, you know, your dream and your goals. So, um, yes, and I'm human sometimes. I sit down and I feel like, oh, my God, am I doing the right thing? thing am yeah. I lost? Mm -hmm. And trust me, every day is a learning curve. This is why you need a lot of mentors. Mm -hmm. That's why I said I mentioned pillars. When I say pillars, mm -hmm. people that are behind you, like you just mentioned my godfather, mm -hmm. you know, because Santana is in the media for so many years. Mm -hmm. I have Mami Ajwakan as my you know, personal manager in Ghana. I have so many people, even in the UK, I've got uh, Eben Aqua, mm -hmm. if you remember him. Yeah. I've got Mark Dalitzi, like today we're on the phone for a good hour, you know, <laughs> and all this advice. So you have all so these people all, that are supporting people you. people that support me, like, advise me. You, because you know, when my husband, if up. my husband advise me, we will fight, you know, <laughs> he's your, he's yeah, your husband. He's your husband, husband like, so. It's not the same, but yeah. I am blessed to have family members, you know, my family especially, That's you know, my big you. brother, all of them, even when I'm wrong, you know, they will still make me feel good, which Listen. they know me to me. I mean, that one, everyone knows that, you know. <laughs> but it's like, I have so much amazing people, my sisters, my that cousins, my best you. friends that I've turned into sisters. I don't even call them my friends. You know, I've got so Everything. many people. Yeah. And, and, and people even like you, always mm -hmm. when you read my story or when you read my articles, mm -hmm. as you know, I've written quite a lot of them. Mm -hmm. You always tell me, well done, keep up. Mm -hmm. When I make mistakes, I do get constructive criticisms. I do mm -hmm. also get a lot of bad criticism. I mean, we all do. And, and yeah. I learn from it. It's like every day is a journey. It's a journey, definitely. You've spoken right, Elizabeth. So, I mean, we all have inspiration in life. Put in the charity to the side. Put in all this stuff you have to decide. You know, you're still a woman. You're still a human sure. being. You're a normal person. Mm -hmm. Who inspires you? I mean... Who's out there that motivates you, inspires you, inspires your journey? You know. Mm. I'm in I, love I asked, with Les I, Brown. Les Brown. Yeah, the motivational speaker. Yeah, I know. I'm Les just Brown. in love with him. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. Not in love, like. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was seeing him. <laughs> He's actually been to the UK. A yeah, lot of times. I did, yeah. yeah. And I think for, f I would say a year now, mm -hmm. I keep falling in love with him every day. You listen to his, his stuff. words touch you. Uh, I've noticed Denzel Washington too got some few bits going on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Denzel but Washington, Brown, I think we all love his, Denzel his, Washington. His, his words too are quite, you know, strong. But Les Brown sh mm -hmm. shut out distractions. Mm -hmm. That is one of the good ones. Yeah. He's like keeps you going. He keeps you listen me going to and listen to him speeches. a lot. And, and they kind of motive because he came from nothing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know I mean, did. and I love those kind of motivational speakers. I don't want someone that's already from, you know, a rich room that I be. I don't want that I be motivational speakers. You know, I like those that came out of nothing. Yeah, you know, you, and have become something. That's it. Definitely. So we have special lady now. Um, you know, you've created that awareness in Ghana. Are there are other African countries that you want to. Oh yes, I want to go everywhere. <laughs> I know, but what's the next African country you'd love to go and do some, you know, awareness on Ghana? I think issues? I will. I would rather go to the Francophone. When oh I say yes, Francophone, because you're French. I speak French, and mm, obviously so Ivory Coast. Because the culture is quite stricter in those kind of, you know, yeah, um, areas, and um, there is quite a few I want to go, but. As I said, I don't think in Ghana I've completed the work in Ghana because mm -hmm. there are some, as you know, 2020, I am going to Ghana. I'm going to my hometown, we are Mwase, <laughs> and obviously I'm going to speak to the students there, going to do donation because it is the homecoming for the we are Mwase diaspora. So which okay. I'm part of the group, so all of us are going down. Oh, wow. So they've given the platform. Year of the return. Year of the return for we are Mwase people. Everyone <laughs> feels like it. The way you did that, like a queen. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I'm, I'm definitely going there okay. and I will continue you know, there was quite other regions in, in Ghana that I have to go because I have been getting a lot of mm -hmm. calls. Like, hey, can you come to my home? Can you come to my home? So, so if people want to donate to Special Lady, help Special Lady, mm -hmm. give to Special Lady, how can they get to you? How can Everything they? Everything of the I can okay. read that or you can read that. So there's. I should quite... read it for you. I can read it for you. <laughs> I know in my head. I can just say it now. Okay, so let everyone out there so know how they can get to mm -hmm. you especially donating because mm -hmm. we need to help our sister that's the honest truth we truth. need to support each other mm -hmm. in our you know in the mm -hmm. Ghanaian community omega live tv you're live the people are watching special ladies in the house and you know i'm making an appeal <laughs> i'm making an appeal that you guys should support <laughs> and help and donate you know mm -hmm. we've got things in our house that we don't want old toys mm -hmm. Um, you know, some of us we have even I got loads of baby wipes, believe it or not. You, no, I you, you're coming twenty twenty to go uh, to Yamasi, you know. I'm going to the village. <laughs> yeah, you're coming in the village, you know? <laughs> You will see you coming. But Bring yeah, so you guys that have all these things and you have yeah. old clothes, you know, sometimes you go and give them to mm -hmm. Oxfam, whatever, or send them to Ghana to do bend down boutique and all that stuff. Shoot. There's a lady here that needs these things. Mm -hmm. She needs all these things to go and give away mm -hmm. to people in Ghana that are less fortunate. Mm -hmm. So Elizabeth, let everyone know how they can contact oh, you. So on my Facebook, I've got my special lady page, which is special lady awareness page as well. I also have my is it special lady awareness. Yeah, or special lady will come up. Straight okay. away. Definitely come mm -hmm. up. If you go to my personal one, which is Elizabeth Amoa, it's Amoa A M O A A. So mm -hmm. that's my name. And I've got my Instagram, which is special lady um, 8253 and I've got my website which is www.specialtyawareness.com and uh, what else yeah my number is everywhere even on Google just put Elizabeth Amoa you know you come <laughs> up. everything will come up <laughs> with my story and yeah, my contact details so yeah they can contact me okay amazing guys we've had Elizabeth Amoa in the Amoa Amoa in the studio mm -hmm. with us today she is the founder of Special Lady which is an organization that creates the awareness mm -hmm. of gynecological issues that women mm -hmm. may be suffering from she calls herself the voice of the voiceless <laughs> i love that part it's just so touching the voice of the voiceless and she's been with us the last hour telling us about you know for when she was young moving to france moving to london marrying having a daughter who was severely mm -hmm. premature not knowing all these medical conditions that she had. And she was diagnosed in Germany, of all countries. She wasn't even diagnosed in the UK. Mm -hmm. So I asked you about how you felt about the <laughs> NHS. But you know, I, do you feel yeah. like the NHS let you down? I mean, we're lucky that we even have free healthcare, but True. still... These if, conditions can be very hidden. Yeah. Because it can be confused, as we talk about. You know, yeah. we've spoken about everything. You going mm -hmm. to Ghana, doing your charitable work, charitable work. Mm -hmm. and most recently, you was featured in The Mirror, UK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Which is good. So, I mean, what's next before we leave and close tonight? That was, I said, there was quite a few bits that, obviously, I cannot, because it's still, there was still contracts going on okay. with them. But then, you will see me soon. You're going to see her soon. <laughs> they will see me soon, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> 
Elizabeth oh, yeah. has taken this all over Britain and I'm very proud of her. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yes, you've been watching Gold Diggers and Elizabeth is a perfect example of a gold digger because she is digging still to, you know, make Special Lady the best that it can be and I you know, I'm really happy that you came on the show. And and thank you for this opportunity and thank you for Mega Life TV for this opportunity too. And thank you for all the viewers that have been watching me today. And still share. You know, share. I'm going to share. Is... You, we're both sharing. Yes. The whole week sharing non-stop. That's it. So still share. Mm -hmm. Share on our YouTube page, Omega Live TV on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Please subscribe so you can get updates of all our other shows that run through the week. Sure. Hit that like button on Omega Live TV right now so you can continue to get updates about all our shows. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Miss New Love, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.